Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My respected brothers and sisters in Al Islam. This is the second part of cryptocurrency Islamic perspective by Dr. Alaru. Uh, try to listen and watch this video to an end. And having done that, don't forget to subscribe by clicking subscribe button, comment, like, and also share it to other Muslims so that everybody be benefited from it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sharing the screen, uh, sharing the slide with uh, my audience. Um, when we are talking about cryptocurrency, no doubt we are talking about money. And that is what will take me into looking at the historical development of money. How did we come uh, to this stage of having money? Uh, you know, in, in, in the beginning, uh, in the primitive era, there was no money. But you, what people uh, uh, used to transact businesses among themselves uh, is what is known as trade by barter. You have a commodity and you need another commodity. You bring your commodity to market to exchange with the commodity that you are actually looking for. But that could not sustain a high volume of business or commercial transactions. So that, is, that was the reason why there was invention in the first place of money, that we need money as a medium of exchange, not always bringing commodities to market to exchange by way of trade by barter. So in the beginning, what human beings, what humanity discovered was commodity money. Commodity money as in gold and silver. Gold and silver were used even at the, at the uh, beginning of the uh, Islamic era, during the time of the Prophet Wasallam, the currencies were based on gold and silver. So gold and silver are regarded as commodity money from the economic perspective, meaning that they have what we call intrinsic value. It's not just a value that is written on a paper, but the gold itself has it at its value, the silver itself has the value, that if you choose, you can even sell it as a commodity. You can use it as a currency, but at the same time, you can even sell it as a commodity because there is what we call an intrinsic, intrinsic value in the gold and as well, in, as well as in the silver. Later on, uh, humanity moved away from commodity money to what we call fiat money. And up till today, what we are still using in the whole world is fiat money, meaning that currencies that have no intrinsic value, the naira that you hold, the dollar that you hold is a mere paper. They will write 20 on one, 100 on another, 1,000 on, on the third one, but they are all papers. There are no intrinsic values attached to those papers. You cannot take this paper and sell it. You can only use it as a medium of instruction, as, as a medium of exchange, sorry. So this is what we call fiat money. Fiat money, simply put, uh, is only gaining acceptance based on the full faith, uh, uh, on the full faith and credit of the issuing authority. If Nigeria issues it Naira, it's not because Nigeria has something to back it up as a commodity. In the beginning, let me say this, in the, uh, at the inception of fiat money, they thought of having underlying assets for every currency. United States of America, uh, the dollars in America was based on gold. Real in Saudi Arabia was based on silver. So you can only issue uh, dollars or reals only to the tune of your holdings in terms of gold and silver. But as uh, uh, in the 70s of the last century, in the 1970s of the last century, uh, America decided that it will not abide by issuing currencies based on what it holds of gold again. It will issue currencies as far as it, 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 uh, the, the, the country thinks it needs to issue. So that actually brought to an end the issue of linking or tying fiat money to commodities 
like in gold and silver. So what we have up till today, like I told you, they are mere papers. They are mere papers. But because they are being issued by government, by authorities, they gain acceptance, wide acceptance all over the world. So all of a sudden, just about 12, 13 years ago, not so long, about just 12, 13 years ago, another money evolved. Another form of money evolved. And that is what we are going to discuss today. Look at how I described it here. I described it as mathematics based money. And that is the truth. Cryptocurrency and other virtual currencies, they are actually mathematics based. It's a money that you will only get if you are able to solve very complex mathematical equations. We shall come to that later, inshallah. So this is what we have in the evolution or evolution of money uh, as far as human beings are concerned. It started from commodity money, moved to fiat money. And today we are having mathematics-based money, money coming from money coming from mathematical equations, uh, uh, very complex equations. The next slide. The next slide, moderator. Now, what is a cryptocurrency? What is a cryptocurrency? Uh, cryptocurrency uh, falls in the class of what we call virtual currencies. And alhamdulillah, it will be easy for you to assimilate this concept. Which kind of meeting are we having now? Which kind of lecture? Mr. Moderator, can you answer me? It's a virtual one, sir. It's a virtual <laughs> lecture. Yes. Uh, what we used to have before pandemic, before COVID-19 pandemic, was physical lecture. Before you can have me talk to you this way, you must have invited me to come to either Ibada or Lagos. Yes. Or anywhere in the world. So that okay. is physical. Or we come now, and meet you in Elori. Or come and meet me in Elori. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> now, what we used to have, whether it is fiat money or commodity money, they are physical currencies that you can see, you can hold, they are physical. But this cryptocurrency, there's nowhere to, it's nowhere to be found. You can never hold it, you can never see it. You can only see picture as a symbol for it, but it is actually a virtual currency. I want us to take note of that one. As different from physical currencies that you have been having, cryptocurrency is a virtual currency. So we need to know what is the definition of a virtual currency. And I've chosen to choose, I've chosen to uh, quote here the definition as given by the European Banking Authority. That's a very reliable source. EBA, European Banking Authority, defined, defined virtual currency as a digital representation of value that is neither issued by a central bank or a public authority, nor necessarily attached to a fiat currency, but is accepted by natural or legal persons as a means of pay payment and can be transferred, stored, or traded electronically. So that was the definition of a virtual currency as given by the European Banking Authority precisely in 2014. But in 2016, Another European institution, a very strong one in the financial sector too, the European Central Bank uh, had a slightly different opinion from what European Banking Authority gave at the definition of a virtual currency. Look at what the European Central Bank had to say in 2016. Given that virtual currencies are not in fact currencies, virtual currencies according to the ECB, the European Central Bank, they are not currencies. And this should be underlined because this is part of what will form the basis, the Sharia basis of our judgment on whether to trade in or not to trade in cryptocurrency. So this is coming from the European Central Bank that they are not currencies. It will be more accurate to regard them as a means of exchange rather than as a means of payment. ECB did not, does not agree uh, with European Banking Authority. It did not, it does not agree with it uh, in the sense that while European 
banking authority describes virtual currency, cryptocurrency, and the rest as a means of exchange. I uh, said it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's preferable to be referred to as just a means of payment. What does that imply? Uh, the implication of this one uh, is both political and legal. What ECB is saying uh, uh, in commenting on the definition given by EBA uh, has no practical implication, uh, economic implication. It's just a legal uh, or political matter. Why? Look at what ECB said. Can we go to the next, uh, the next uh, slide? Because I don't want us to take it at the back of our mind without, oh, even European Central Bank is saying cryptocurrency is not a currency. It's, it's actually a political statement. It has a legal connotation. Why? Look at what they say, what, what that ECB says further. It says, from the perspective of the Union, the European Union, it, said, uh, uh, it says, according to the treaties and the provisions of Council Regulation EC number 974-98, the Euro is the single currency of the Union's economic and monetary union. So actually, like I told you, this is just a mere political statement, but it has its own legal connotation. What ECB is drawing EBA's attention to is that for you to call any other currency, be it cryptocurrency or any other one, for you to qualify it as a means of exchange, as a currency, you need to change the law. You need to change the European Union's law. Because according to the extant law of the European Union, Euro, the Euro is the single currency recognized in the Union. So I want you to please note that. When European Central Bank says cryptocurrency or virtual currency is not a currency, it doesn't have any commercial, any economic, and even any Sharia implication. But it does have uh, uh, significant, uh, it does have significant uh, uh, political and legal implication, like I said in the beginning. Please give me one minute. Uh, so we are just going to give Prof about one minute. Okay, Prof no, is back. back. Yes, yes. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Uh, sorry, because I'm in the house, so the children needed my attention, so I had to pause and give them the required attention. I'm sorry for that. Okay. Uh, can we move on? Yes, we're on slide five or slide six. Um, yes. So, um, so that is just about that. For us to note the legal, uh, the political uh, connotation of what the ECB is actually saying. Now, uh, uh, simply put, let's now go to a very simple, uh, not complex uh, 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 definition. Uh, you would like to know what is actually cryptocurrency that we want to discuss. Cryptocurrency, simply put, cryptocurrencies are digital or virtual currencies that are encrypted or secured using cryptography. Cryptography is the technology, which simply means computerized encoding and decoding of information. This is what cryptocurrency is all about. They are all about codes that need somebody to encode and another one to decode. So it's, it, that is why, you know, the name is even coming from that technology. The technology is called cryptography. And what emanates from it is called cryptocurrency. So simply put, cryptocurrency is a digital or a virtual currency that is encrypted using cryptography. And it can be stored. It can be created. It can, be, it, it can even be traded electronically. So uh, I think with this, uh, 
uh, we uh, must have had uh, 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 adequate uh, insight about what exactly is cryptocurrency before we move to the next level of our discussion. Now, at this point, I need to uh, mention a very important thing. When you mention cryptocurrency to an average person today, his or our mind goes to what? Goes to Bitcoin. Isn't it true, Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. It's yes. Bitcoin that comes to mind first. Yes, if you mention crypt cryptocurrency to an average man or woman, anywhere in the world, the mind goes to Bitcoin. But I must tell you, we have hundreds, not tens, hundreds of, of cryptocurrencies in the world. We have them in hundreds. But why is Bitcoin so popular? Yes, it deserves it. Because a Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency in the world. The first cryptocurrency to be invented in the world is Bitcoin. And in fact, as I call it in this, in this uh, slide, I even refer to Bitcoin as the king, the king of all cryptocurrencies. From any angle that you look at it, you see, I told you earlier on that the, the uh, market capitalization of Bitcoin is $1 trillion today. The closest one of all other cryptocurrencies, I think is Ethereum, will be just in the range of uh, very, very far from this figure, very far from this figure. Okay, for example, uh, I, as I checked a few days ago, the current price a few days ago of one Bitcoin was 55,000 US dollars. Imagine 55,000 US dollars. The, the next closest one to it in terms of wealth is Ethereum. And it only costs just about less than $2,000. You can see the huge difference. Less than $2,000 to $55,000. So if people are taking Bitcoin to be the representation of cryptocurrency, then they are not too wrong. Because one, it was the first to be invented. It is the most popular, it is the biggest in size, and it is even the most traded. Even in terms of trade and investment, it is the most traded all over the world. Why am I saying this is that henceforth, after this slide, I will be narrowing my discussion to, crypto, uh, to Bitcoin as a representation of other cryptocurrencies, because this time at our disposal can never be sufficient for us to talk of every single cryptocurrency and their characteristics and features before we now talk of the Sharia rule on them. It is impossible uh, within a period of just one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. But I must assure you that Bitcoin is actually a perfect representation of all other cryptocurrencies. They are, they are similar to the Bitcoin in most of the characteristics and features. So if you understand the rule of Sharia on Bitcoin, we can equally transfer same to other cryptocurrencies. Uh, which slide should yeah. I move to, sir? We're on slide Adam? six. Which slide yes. should I move it to? Six now, we're on six now. Six. We've just come to the end of the second part of Islamic law perspective about cryptocurrency. Try to subscribe by clicking subscribe button, comment and like. Then continue the next part below.